Next. Okay, so Michelin 1428, first half is very famous. All right, second half, no one has ever heard of. Barov Am Hadras Melech Uv Ephes Laom Mechitas Razam. Not only has, have people not heard of the second half, but they can't translate it, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so uh, anyone want to talk about the first half? Well, I mean, Barov Am Hadras Melech, it just means uh, with majority of the nation. Okay, so uh, this is something I'm like 95% sure of, that the word rove in rabbinic Hebrew means majority. But in biblical Hebrew, it means something else. Multitude. I mean, it's related. Multitude, right? So in a multitude, um, the yeah, the nation. I think here, people is probably a better um, a better translation. Hadras Melech. Glorifies the king? Yeah, I think this is a uh, a noun. Is the okay. glory of the king. Okay. Ephes laom mechitas Let me show you all the pieces. Ephes is ceasing... Uh, or end or non-existence. Okay, I mean, that's like you know, zero. You got to remember zero was not invented back then. Um, Laom is people. Okay, like Laumim, I think it's from Shnei uh, Laumim Paredu, right? It was by, by uh, Rivka. Mechita is terror, destruction, or ruin, uh, or dismay. And then Razon. So Razon is a little, little bit uh, of a mach locus here. We'll see in the translations. Putintit. Uh, Okay, which I think is a fancy word for leader. Okay, um, and they only quote our pasuk as the uh, only source, so that's a uh, you know, yeah. So anyone want to try it out? What's the, what's om again? Le, le om. It's weird. Le is not a prefix. I don't think. I think le om is the word, uh -huh. so it means people. So people, or population. People will cease. Ubefs with the, with the seas. Okay. And with the seas of people. Okay. Uh, with the seas of people. I mean, I'd. Okay, you could say with. I don't know. Uh, in the seas. in yeah in <laughs> the ceasing or let's say non-existence, existence or let's say absence. That sounds more normal. Yeah. Absence people. of people. Mechitas razon. So mechita again is a destruction. yeah destruction or terror. Terror to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh let's say terror, destruction, ruin, we'll just put all of them of the I'm just say I don't want to look at what a potentate actually is. I think it means a leader. Whatever it is, I still want to use the word. Potentate, yeah. Uh is a monarch or ruler. Oh, okay, the ruler. Of a ruler. Uh, that's a D ruler. Okay. All right, let's let's see what the um Minimalist translations have here. Do, do, do. do word of the day for my fifth graders. <laughs> yeah, I do word of the day for all my classes. Okay. Mitzustion um, uh, says, FS is in Yanukomo in, meaning without. Okay, let's just say without. That sounds more natural. Uh, but without people. Um, uh, and Laom. I'm missing the in. Oh, uh, the in. What was that? Where? Ube FS. Ube FS. Yeah, but I think he's saying. But without people, you think yeah, in the translation, I if you're but in the absence, right? Then you have I think, end. right? Or yeah, I think he's saying the, the, the phrase, I think he's saying BFS is, is just the word without. I think, I mean, we can still say in the absence, I'll, I'll put that there, yeah. um, or in the absence of, yeah, I uh, think with that, with that would be like. It, um the um you know the translate the base is, is with and it's like okay. with a cessation meaning without yeah laom is uma uh so uh so uma is more like nation right um okay and the mechita is shever upachad okay so that's also both of them uh is uh is breaking or um fear and then Razon, oh, he has to define all of them. Okay, good. It's not just us. Inyano Kumosar. So that's like a, a an officer, a ruler. All right, good. So we got the Matustion. Targum Sadigon uh, says, who he only does the modifies the second half. Uvehedar Halaom Mechitas Razon. And in the absence of the um of the the people, I guess, or of the of the nation is a destruction of the Razon. And uh, Katha says, Tugum Laom Chazav. Kibutzas bnei Adam hamugadim lachativa acha. So uh, a laom is a, a group of people who are united into one chunk, 
Bine Razon and Rosen means sar, and he says mina hamilam hama hu fachos simla salma keves kesev. So it's one of these words that like Razon and Rosen mean the same thing. You just gotta flip the the letters. Okay, and then Targum says besuk ad ama hadre demalka vehech tibetzir ama mit mitvar parnase. Okay, so same thing, but he says uh uh betzir is uh with is without. All right, fine. And then we got our minimalist translations here. Our scroll says a multitude of people is a king's glory, but without a regime, rulership is broken. So they say rulership, not ruler. And they have Mechita is broken, Laom is regime, and with Ephesus is without. Hirsch says in the multitude of people is the king's glory, but in decrease of population, the dread of one. Okay, so this is the other thing also. Razon, um, we say this in, uh, is it in... Um, no, we, we definitely, I know there's a thing where, where Razon, Amin, you know, right? <laughs> Sova, Razon, but they're paired, right? Sova is uh, like satiety and abundance, and Razon is like a uh, famine, you know? So <laughs> I bet Refresh has a theory about Razon and Mazon are related. Yeah, okay. And then Alter, Alter acknowledges both of them. He says, in the, in the people's multitude is the king's glory, but when the nation is absent, the ruler's disaster. And then he says, ruler... The translation reads Rosen, okay, not Razon, for the Masoretic Razon famine. But I'm going to keep all these up here because I just, we, you know, we, we don't really know uh, uh, which is right. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is a difficult puzzle to, to work with. I don't have an idea, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. I mean, this is one where I feel like um, the more surefire route is to just latch onto the first half and then use that to figure out what translation you want for the second half. Yeah. All right, so what are the, uh, what are the questions here? Definition questions. Yeah, let's do all the uh, definition questions. Let's knock them all off. What, what, do you mean by, oh, what do you mean by... Yeah, okay. So what uh, is... I'm just going to list all of them. What is Hadar? Um, uh, or I guess what is Hadras Melech? Um, what is... Uh, What's Roham? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to do the... Uh, yeah, hold on What does Mechita mean? Uh, what is Razon? And then um, I'm going to say, um, uh, see, I don't view this as a definition question. I view this as, you know, um, how much um, uh, constitutes the rov am. Because we know what rov means right. and we know what am is. So uh, that's why I was doing the definition question first. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I was... Yeah. Assuming, um, assuming that, uh, what is it, Rosalind means leader. Yeah. Um, so then, the terror of the leader, or however you translate Mechita, yeah, is that the terror that the leader is experiencing, uh, or the terror right. that the leader is inflicting? Right. Okay. So, what does Mechita mean, and then whose Mechita uh, is it? The terror experienced by the Razon, or I oh, guess by the ruler, uh, or by the people. Yeah, Ariel. Um. What's the scenario? Yeah, that's going to be the major question here. And what's the subject of it? Yeah, what uh, what scenario is this describing? And then what is the subject of the Pasuk? Yeah, Sean? Yeah, is, what's the contrasting of Melech and Razo, if there is any? Yeah. It could just be poetic language. but it's Yeah, no, that is that is strange, right? Usually you have a Pasuk about a king, and, uh, and the whole Pasuk is about a king, right? Here you got two different, uh, what is the relationship between or contrast, I guess, between Melech and Razon, uh, you know, according to, I guess, either translation. Can you explain that question? Actually, you hold on a second. If it's ruler, if Razon means ruler. So, in other words, this is saying in the uh, abundance of multitude of people is the glory of the king. Uh -huh. King seems to be the highest type of uh, you know power, and then uh, and then it demotes it to razon in the second half. And then if it's not talking about a king, if razon means hunger or famine, so then the whole puzzle is talking about a king. But then you got the question about what's the uh, what what are the opposites? Actually, let's just say that here in general, right? What what is the relationship uh, between the two halves in general? Okay, like what is the opposite of what? Yeah, and to flesh out eight. Yeah. Um, are the Melf and the Razon really the same person, or is it two different types of people? And if they are the same person, 
then why demote him to just right. Miller and not him? Yeah, and if they're the same type of person, uh, why demote him? Yeah, Ariel. Yeah, well, it's not. Um, I mean, if, and if he doesn't have any people, like what? Why? What? Why would it lead to his destruction? Yeah. So let's uh, just say, what's the uh, what is the cause and effect relationship between? I guess really in both halves, right? The rove. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be the main question. The rove on, um, and the hadras melech, uh, in the first half, and the um uh. In uh oh, sorry, the FS FS Laom and the Mechitas uh Razon. Yeah. By the way, I I know I've I've shown this before, but I just want to show you um again on Aha Torah, then um uh, oh, let me make this bigger. Uh, I think the launch is I'm imagining this 28. Never mind, forget it. Yeah, I thought there was a feature that I didn't. Yeah, okay, I feel like those are the major questions. I mean, the, obviously, the question is what's the practical, practical decision making, uh, application, and then like who is the, who is the audience? Uh, right, is this for the leader or the people? Is this for the leader? himself or the people yeah either um i have an approach okay i think Ariel was first yeah you first. Uh, all right it's you can your first isaac first yeah okay thanks um so i think uh, um i think this is targeting us um specific half that the king might have of that you know because in a certain sense the king is all powerful mm -hmm. um, he feels like he doesn't need his populace right for you know, and while it's true, he doesn't need. I mean, he might not need any individual member of the populace, but he does need having like the throngs of people. Yeah, and if they leave him, he's nothing. You know. Right. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and just like you see this play out practically with with bosses who, um, who like feel like you know they have like they you know they have lots and lots of power but then their employees leave them and then, the, and then it all just crashes and burns because right. they don't have people right so it's not just talking about a king it's talking about anyone who's in a position of power over a uh, system right so I, I, that's also like the basic approach i want to take as well but i, I think we can mm -hmm. maneuver in terms of who this is for because i think that cuts both ways um right so um so there's a uh a havamina uh that a king or ruler or like, you know, bossy man, uh, not bossy man, boss man can have um, that his power is intrinsic. Uh, but in reality, he has to recognize that it's dependent on the, the people he rules um, and can be taken away, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, by, by them. Yeah, right. I think that's going to be the the crux of whatever idea we have. Yeah. Yeah, you have a similar. Can I, can yeah. I, can I add on? Yeah. Can I, and I'm gonna. I want to say that, you know, um, I, my my approach isn't about you know the oh the king the king uh you know he does back to his people. Mm -hmm. and the chiddush is the chiddush is that um and I want to use Achashverosh and and uh, Cyrus Cyrus the Great. Ooh, okay. Oh, what was it, Cyrus? Um, uh, I, I think. Well, I, I think it was Cyrus. Um, you know, like uh, both Ah Af and Cyrus, they both went out of their ways to uh, to really um, appease their officers, appease uh -huh. the people. You know, because you could be neutral. Mm -hmm. You know, but but look, you, you know, we're talking right, 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 you're not you won't you won't further your agenda you won't further your power right right and you know the second half just means that if you don't have their influence then then you won't really you won't really succeed in fact it could be destructive because like if there's another guy who wants to gain power he could promise the world and 
You have to solidify your relationships. Okay, so so the practical advice for the rulers, they need to appease the people for his own um in order in order to even like to to have and maintain and cultivate yeah. his own cultivate his own power. Yeah, like the case is the case with Cyrus the that I remember in class was um was he he made he he gathered all the people in the uh top officers and the, his first day he made them work really hard. Uh -huh. And the second day he made he he went out of it to understand what each person liked. Uh -huh. He made a, a glorious party uh -huh. Interesting. to cater to each person. Uh -huh. And then he asked them, what day would you rather have? The second day or the first day? Uh -huh. And if, if you make me king, you're, you're uh, under my rulership, you will, uh, your second day will be like this for... Uh -huh. king. Yeah, that's good. So um, that's what... Uh, right. Yeah, that, that's that's also why it's a good... I, you know, I, I don't know, there's this resistance in older generations of, uh, of educators um, that is... Uh, like almost like a uh, an anti democratic um, mentality that like the classroom is not a democracy. You know, it's such an effective thing though. Like when you ask, when you help, when you 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 know you work with students and ask them what they want or what their preferences are, and like coming up with policies and rules together, and not like being tyrannical. Like it's in your best interest. Like at, at the end of the day, like you are you know you know you're one person and they're like you know uh, twenty people or whatever. So it's uh, it's in your best interest. Yeah, Ezra. Um, maybe Elan with Isaac's approach to yeah. explain why it switches from Melch to Reza. Yeah. Maybe Melch is speaking in the framework of how the king looks at himself and views himself objectively as uh -huh. a powerful person. Yeah. But then it points out the fact uh, that okay. really his only power is insofar as he rules the people. But yeah. if they leave him, then he no longer has any power. Okay, so perhaps uh, the uh, this uh, this is why it uses Melech, uh in the first half um, because he views his own Malchus uh, as intrinsic, um, but the second half uses razon, uh, which is a like which is a more like like um, uh, utilitarian, uh, you know, functional definition uh, to point out that you know to, to to I guess to underscore uh, the real source of his uh, of his power. Yeah, Sean. Yeah, I have a different approach. Okay. Um, it seems like these three approaches are focusing on Hazrat Mel, which yeah. is power, yeah. which for me doesn't fit as much. Yeah. For me, like the glory of the king is more like how great the king is yeah. and not necessarily within his power, although I do see this approach. Yeah. What I would say instead is that I think there's a Halloween that <laughs> a lot of times kings think that the way in which they glorify themselves is through physically glorifying themselves. Mm -hmm. And the Pasuk is really pointing out that the glory of a king is not within himself or within his palace and, you know, how everything looks, but really within how he's ruling as a leader. And the only way in which you can actually see that dimension is how the people are functioning. Uh -huh. So if the people are functioning in a way which is like a positive society, so then you say that that's the glory of the king. That's how you see, um, that's the barometer of his greatness, not any, like physical material thing, but really the people. And when the people are absent, meaning that, you know, society is not functioning well, so then that shows the ruin of the ruler because that ultimately is going to spell the, the destruction of the ruler if he can't control people. Okay, so so the emphasis on the glory of the king, the glory is only measurable by, by how well the, the populace is functioning. Um, uh, sorry, just say that last point again. Yeah. And then the reverse is that the absence of the people functioning yeah. is the destruction of the ruler. Meaning once society collapses, so then the ruler collapses as well. He goes, you know, with the ship. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's good. I also was focusing on the, uh, the glory, but I'm going to take it one step. Um, actually, maybe I, I can't tell if this is. Give me one second. Maybe this is just Isaac's and uh, Ariel's and uh, Ezra's idea. Um, okay, so I, I'm I'm gonna just state the idea and then and then we'll see we'll see where it falls in. Uh, is that um, that um, the the subject of the pasuk is the nature of the king's glory? Okay, uh, which is that it's an illusion propped up by the 
the you know the the people's recognition okay so like it it can be real insofar as people like believe in it um but if they withdraw their their belief you know their i guess their their uh, attribution of glory to him then the entire kingship loses power you know um so right i mean the the what's the classic tale that like illustrates this <laughs> is the emperor's new clothes right um which like uh are you familiar Still the emperor's new clothes oh uh, no is that a movie no it's a, i mean it's like a, it must be like a fairy tale or something like that it's like the um uh, I, I don't even remember the exact plot, but the, 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 something basically like the somehow there's a, a a tailor or something like that that the king hires to like make him like the uh, the the best um, you know clothing, and the like the tailor basically like doesn't make him anything, but then convinces him that this is a you know these garments are you know, he basically like says it's an, you know. He doesn't say it's an invisible garment, but he like he holds up like this thing and he says, you know, only like people who can like see the true, you know. Like so yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so only certain people can like see your your garment. And like the king basically like doesn't want to admit that he can't see it. So like he pretends that that uh that that he's actually wearing something, and then all the people uh around also don't want to be seen as someone who like is uh lacks this quality. I'm telling this really badly. <laughs> and, <laughs> but the point is is that like everyone is just pretending that like this king is actually wearing clothing, but he's really just naked, you know? And like, and then I think the story ends with like this one kid, like pointing out like the king's not wearing any clothes and then it breaks the entire illusion, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I think that that's the phenomenon that this is pointing out. And I, I, I think I'm influenced. I, I know this is very close to like what Isaac, I think Isaac, Ariel and Ezra are talking about like a real phenomenon, but I, I want to point out that the subject is really the illusion. And I think, and I, I'm, you know, you don't, we don't usually like interpret these things in their historical context, but I do think that like, in the majority of the world at the time of Shlomo, people viewed kingships as like intrinsic qualities, like, and that the kings are objectively great, like they're, they're demigods or they're, you know, like, so I, I think it, this idea packed even more punch back then, you know, uh, that this is purely a social phenomenon, you know, that the only king who has intrinsic models is God. Um, yeah, but I, what I want to do though, I think the reason why I also am inclined towards this is uh, I want to try to predict the Meiri's Derek Nister. Oh, I was, I was oh yeah, yeah. You can that. you can even have a first crack at it. Okay. Um, okay, fine. I not fully thought out, but I'll just say to take a time. Okay. okay. Um, maybe you can say that like you know, the, you know, you have a the, like like you need a you need a king. It's more line with my idea of transcendent to Nestor, but okay. like uh, you need to cater to your um, uh, you know, your 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 uh, you know, emotional faculties or yeah, your faculties yeah, like that you know. Because they're kind of like necessary. And look, this is much like it's not like the, the ideal, but like yeah. you know, you need to cater to them in in, in mm -hmm. a ways such that it can uh, it can further your intellect. Okay. You know? Um, yeah it's kind of in a nutshell okay so let's actually break it down to the components first okay and then uh, I, I don't know if my my approach is, is similar to yours so th this is the me uh where, where does he get it from One second. um so for i'm just going to review this because i feel like we haven't talked about it in a while so the meiri in his derek nisser uses this muscle that shlomo uses in kohelas um which is um in kohelas 413 uh Tov yelled miskain the Chachami Melech Zakin Uxil Asher Lo Yadali Hizahir Ode. Actually, I don't want to do Rashi here because I think Rashi brings it down. I think it's from Chazal originally. Um, so better a, a poor and wise youth than a, an old and foolish king who does not know how to guard himself anymore. Kimi Bes Hasurim Yata Limloch, Gamba Mahuso Nolad Rash. Because he came from the, uh, like the, the prison to rule. And he, uh, and even in his kingship, he is born poor. Okay, I don't know what that means. So Rashi says, Tov yel and mis came v'chacham. So who is the poor and wise youth? Zei Yitzhar Tov. Um, that's the Yitzhar Tov. Lama Nikra Yeled, how, why is he called a youth? She'inu bab adam ad yil gomoshana. Because it doesn't, he doesn't come into a person until he's 13, right? So Yitzhar Tov is your intellect. That doesn't really start exerting an influence until you're 13. And in mis came, what does it mean? He's poor. She'in ha'ivarim shomin lo kamod li Poor here does not mean in money, 
it means an influence, you know, that, that the limbs, you know, your body does not obey your Yitzhar Tov in the same way that it does the Yitzhar Ra. And the Chacham, he's Chacham Shemaskilas Adam Bederach Tova, because it could uh, intelligently guide you on the right path. And then Melech Zaki Nuxil, the Yitzhar Hara, Shuhu Shalit Al Kol Ivarim. So he's called a Melech because he rules over all of the, um, uh, all of the limbs. And Zakin Misha Shanolad Havlad Hunasanbo. He's called old because he was uh, he he emerges in you as soon as you're born. Kamu Shnemar says the Pesachatas Rovates. That's the machlogs between uh, Antoninus and Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, right? Not not you know uh, it seems pretty clear Antoninus is not Marcus really, even though that's a fun thing to think about. Um that the Anamachlog is about when the Yitahara is in you. I think Rabbi Yehuda Nasi said it's from from in the womb. And then Antonio says from when you are born. And then I think he, uh, Ruby Hunasi concedes to him. And then Ksil is Shemat Eil Lederach Ra. Ksil, because he gu guides you on the wrong path. Kaku Nidrash Midrash. Okay, so that's what the Meir uses to explain all of the Derek Nister stuff. Okay, so here we have, yeah, Isaac. I also want to take a crack at the Derek Nister. Okay, sure. So let me just plug in the the, the components here. Uh, so Melech equals Yitzir. Uh, hara, okay. Um, uh, and then the um, actually, let me make this uh, all right. Mel is, is Yitzhar Ra, and then the Am and Laom are the uh, the the you know, the limbs and bodily faculties, okay. Um, yeah, that's all we got. Okay, yeah, Isaac. <laughs> yeah, I think there's this feeling of like this pull, this drive is so powerful. How is it? It's impossible to to like disobey it. Yeah. But then when you actually then like do and you know you start pulling your energies away from from with the, the drive, then it just looks empty and powerless and yeah you know. <laughs> all right so that, that's that's a similar approach to the one i'm taking i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna take it uh the 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 in a slightly different direction okay so so the i'm gonna say it like this the yitzhar hara can feel like um like uh in you know impossibly powerful okay and unconquerable okay like a king okay in reality the power lies in the in the people, okay, i.e. the the limbs. And this is the whole Sefer Achinok's approach to understanding mythos is that like, like if you're trying to um, influence the king from within, it's not likely to succeed. But if you change your actions, okay, i.e. get the people on board um, independently of the king, then the king will have to follow, okay? Uh, so in other words, that's the same thing of the, the mitzvahs influence you by changing your actions and then your actions change your emotions and your internal state, you know? So the mistake, and I think this is related to the, um, it's related to the phenomenon in the end of Sukkah, the Gemara Sukkah about how Lassi Lava, like the, you know, uh, God will show the Tzadikim and the Rishonim, the Yitzhahara, and like, I forget which one it is. They're, they're both going to cry. What was it? I think it will be a big mountain. Right. And the fact that they overcame it, right? Sean will see like a tiny little string or something. Yeah, and the, and they'll they'll cry because they they couldn't overcome it, you know. And uh, and I think that's also showing that like for the Rishayim, there is an illusion of power that the Itzahara has, and the objective reality is it doesn't have the power that people attribute it. Uh, to it, you know, but what this is saying, I think what's interesting about this one, if we take the Meiri, I'm, I'm very curious to see what the Meiri, you know, I know he's going to say something like this, but what's interesting about it is it does not have the presence of the Yelid Miskain in here, right? This is not about the intellect overpowering the Yatara, this is about the limbs overpowering the Yatara, yeah. Okay, um, I, so, I, okay, I have a question on this. Okay. Because, and the reason why I'm furthering, I want to further this idea because, like, I, I believe that this is, like, the main idea on how to um overthrow an evil mom okay okay um you're well, you're, you're still going to be going on the dare of or you're going for the well it, it's it's the it's the application of the okay yeah Nisser, right meaning like it, really the people are in control and like, right you know you you um you know you you influence the king to yeah you know either destroy him or to make him better whatever. right so so like um but but in history the question is in history like uh you see that the mala you know he is evil and like he 
make let's say like Malik was evil and like the people want to put him to either overthrow him or like change his actions like you know so how does that work because people always use the excuse oh yeah he's too powerful I, I, I can't do anything yeah and the reason why i'm asking this question is because that's that's the argument people give me when i say that we have to overthrow the king so according to this this is the best ride ever so oh I'm sorry, I have to put in my goals here. I'm just wondering. Yeah, I mean, ignore the last part. I'm just messing. Okay, but yeah, yeah, just... yeah. No, no. I, I do. Th I do think that. Um... I was also thinking about who's the audience for, yeah. uh, and according to my approach, I think the, the audience is for the people, yeah. and that that they have to be able to see through the illusion of the king's power, either to overthrow him or even to influence him. I mean, I think that that's another thing is that people think that it's not. There's no point in even trying to influence the king because he's because they're intimidated by the grandeur. Yeah. In terms of the king himself, it's true that the people are give him the power, but in reality, if you try to let's say overthrow him, you're going to lose a lot of people though. Right. It's not just like they can just do whatever they want. Correct, so, right. Um, well, what do you mean? Meaning the king does have actual power, right? Yeah. I know. And, yeah. So the question is like how how true is this puzzle? Right. No, so there I think so, that, I mean yeah, okay. like, like the reason why I'm saying this and I'm not at this point because like and at least in the <laughs> system like there are checks and balances. Like, yeah. like ideally, if the mouth is a Russia, you should overthrow him because you have the center and everything. And like the only way you don't overthrow him is because if they themselves are evil, you know, a corrupt. You know, so yeah, that's I mean, why if you have like a righteous Sanhedrin or like righteous people, no. you have an evil king, ideally you should implement this puzzle. Right. Yeah, easier said than done. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ideally, no, right, right, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Otherwise, what's the puzzle competition? Yeah. Right. But I, that's why I think that the, you know, the the direct practical application has to do with just once you see that the king's glory is an illusion that is dependent on people acknowledging it, it gives you a whole realm of decision making possibilities, like a whole range of decision making possibilities, even within the king being the king, you know, uh, that you can use to like, uh, you know, like as avenues uh, to, you know, to, to influence. Right, let's see what the Meiri says. I know we don't usually go to Meiri first, but uh, I'm very curious here. Uh, I bet uh, it's possibly connected to the next one. Brova Mahdur's Where's the rest of the Miri? Oh, yeah, he connects it to the next one, but we're going to do it anyway. Erech Apaim Rav Tvuna Uktar Ruach Miri Mivelas. One who's slow to anger has great understanding, and one who's short tempered uh, elevates foolishness. Benigle Ha'arla Melech Limshoch Lev Ha'am. Uh, so the external meaning is that it's advice for the king to draw the people in uh, to uh, to love him. Okay. Like a chacham said to one of the malachim, this is in safe. Sorry, I still don't know what that is. Um, Strive to rule over the, the hearts of people. Not only their bodies. A <laughs> <laughs> um, good example of that. That was the, uh, I think that was the nickname that they gave to Princess Diana, that she was uh, the princess of people's hearts. And uh, unlike the rest of the British monarchy, then uh, like she really appealed to them and really, you know, uh, ended up having way more influence uh, even after her death than, uh, than, than the monarchy. Uvrovam, Efshar Shapirusho Barov Mamish. Some say it means... Um, with uh, a, a multitude, uh, literally, with many people. Boris Chayalos, Yesh Hadra of a couple of Melech, and uh, huge, uh, you know, legions of, uh, of soldiers, uh, then that will bring glory uh, and honor to majesty to the king. But this is only if they love him. All of them will make themselves present for him and make themselves available for him in order to do whatever he commands, right? So in other words, people are going to want to serve him. That's the other thing also is that, and that'll really bring a glory to the king. I guess the estimation of the people in their love of him, like the way that they regard him. Okay. Razon is just a synonym for Melech. Meaning Roznim. Kihem shtig gzeros. Razon verozen. So same word. Al mishkal gadol godel. Begam bekibutz 
Yuchol Hishtamish Bimilas Rizonim Kamo Bimilas Brachim. Okay, fine. Klamar Shib Efes Laom with with uh, in an absence of people who Mechitas Haadon Vishivro. That's going to be the destruction of the king and his, of the Lord and his breaking. Vishma Farshim Razon Shem Tavar Kamo Inyan Gamkein Ratzlam Mechitas Haadnus. So Razon could be ruler or it could be rulership. Okay, fine. So so far. It sounds like it's along the lines of what we were saying, uh, not so much what I was saying, but what you guys were saying is like the um, having the people supporting you is really what leads to your ability to rule. And it's saying like the the the, the extreme of that is when the people love you and want to serve you, yeah. you know, um, and uh, yeah, I mean. That's the other thing also is like, um, I'll just say again, I, I'm, you know, this could be applied to any sy system where you have like someone in rulership power, but like, like, you know, I've had people like, you know, so, some, sometimes people are astounded by what work I can get the students to do, you know, but they, it, it's cultivated over time. It's like, they want to do my homework because they see that, first of all, I put in uh, uh, you know, the same amount of time and care and actually like care about their learning. Like they'll be willing to go out of their way to do lots and lots of work because they, 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 you know, they, they, uh, you know, value the, uh, the, the learning, you know? Yeah. That's fine. Cause like, um, I, I, got, I, I just did a measure with, uh, with the sentiment. Mm -hmm. One of the ways where, um, where mm -hmm. he, he got us to opt into working uh, uh Paro, you mean? Paro, not yeah, Rabbi Cinnamon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, was that he on the first day or whatever? You know, when they were signing up for it. Yeah, yeah. Like he he was doing the work with them on uh, the ground. Uh huh. Right. Yeah, and it showed. Oh, yeah. the, the melzes must be important. I'm gonna sign up. And yeah. Then, like he switched the knob and yeah. Like, Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the bodily faculties um will be um sub, uh, subjugated to his service.